Yo, Elliot, as you know, I lost my son that was a stillborn at 20 weeks along back in late August. I held it together and remained steadfast for my wife during the whole ordeal and all of September. I supported her and did well with sales at my job selling ADT security. But then October came and it's like I walked off a cliff. I can't seem to lift a finger for work. Any bit of work I do seems like a monumental task. I feel depressed, anxious, stressed, and useless. I need some advice on this because I don't know what to do and how to climb out of this hole. So there's, there's a few things that I'd like to address here, man. The very first is God be with you and your wife and your family for this cross. And I, I say it that way, this cross, because this is an opportunity if you allow it. It's an opportunity in a number of ways. Number one of which is that you get to bear some heaviness in life so that you can grow stronger, but that only happens if the context is right. If you get to bear this heaviness for anything less than a mortification of your lower faculties, a penance for past sins, and an offering up as a sacrifice to God, then it's going to be difficult. I said earlier that the warrior is most rightly ordered when he is devoted to something bigger than him. And so right now that warrior spirit in you uh, gets to devote, right? What is to devote is to give up something. Give this up for the greater glory of God and to ask him to show you how this magnifies his glory for you in your life. There is, I know this is a cliche of way of saying it, but it's all perspective that there's a silver lining to every cloud. And that's not to make light of your situation because the heavier the cross, the greater the responsibility, the greater the authority of the power that comes with it. Wisdom think about, man. Think about the wisdom that you that gets to be poured into your life as a byproduct of this experience. God has not given me that cross. And so I don't bear the wisdom of having that kind of loss. You will. With that wisdom, you can bring blessings into other people's lives. This is all high concept, right? This is all spiritual, but I know that you're dealing with a physiological pain. If you offer up that physiological, psychological, emotional pain, offer it up in the way that I'm talking about right now, you lighten it, you enlighten it, right? Offering something up is raising it up. You raise it up. So just a perspective, a mind shift, a prayerful way for you to be in this time. And I would offer you this as well as ter in terms of a doing, right? Because this is all of a, this is all of a thinking. Is all of a, of a perspective, but it informed in, in, in form in ways of doing. Pray, my brother, but don't just pray. Prayer, prayer is, prayer can be formulaic. There are f prayer formulas that are given to us by the church through the saints and through tradition, and. I can't help but think of a prayer that I have recently grown fond of. I could even find it here. Look through Catholic prayers. Catholic, so this is not against Protestants or anybody else who's praying, but the Catholic faith has a storehouse of formulaic prayers that are designed with, with uh, intent. They're powerful, they're like weapons. They're like weapons. And one of which, I don't know if it's very attuned to what it is that you're dealing with. But I would invite you to look up the litany of humility. I'm gonna read this prayer for you. I'm gonna read this, read, read this prayer for us. And, and I'll leave you with that. Do, use this as an opportunity to develop your prayer life. 
The words of these prayers will heal your body. They will heal your mind. They will heal your soul. The litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me. From the desire of being loved, deliver me. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me. From the desire of being honored, deliver me. From the desire of being praised, deliver me. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me. From the desire of being consoled, deliver me. From the desire of being approved, deliver me. From the, de from the fear of being humiliated, deliver me. From the fear of being despised, deliver me. From the fear of suffering, deliver me. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me. That others may be more loved than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I may set aside, be set aside, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Yeah. So that's just one of many that I would love to share with you guys. I don't even know if that was the most efficacious for your situation, but it was one that came to my mind, so I decided to share it. It's the desires, right? It's the fears and desires that hold us trapped. The wanting to be free from this cross, right? Like even Jesus in the, in the agony, he says, take this cup from me. But then quickly he, he, he turns around and says, but if it be your will, let it be done unto me. So that's my offer to you, my brother, and I pray that it would be of benefit done.